Hello everybody and welcome to episode 2 of my Kerbal Space Program modded playthrough type deal. Uh, this is where we left off after the live stream in the first episode. Um, yeah, I was flying to do this mission um, in a space plane that is not particularly stable, it's really small. There was really no need for these nacelles on the back of it. Um, but they kind of happened anyway. Um, yeah, so I do a lot of... Um, I'm post-commentating on these videos and it allows me to edit and speed up the grindy bits and just generally be able to play with things to make it a bit easier on the viewing so you don't have to see quite so much of the grind. Especially these uh, space plane missions where you have to fly huge amounts of distance to be able to get to where you're going. So yeah, just time warping through with the space plane. Um, like I said, the air intake from these two nacelles is not really that necessary. Um, I could have just had a couple of regularly mounted ones on the wings if I have that unlocked at the moment. I can't quite remember. Just checking the amount of airflow coming in here now and seeing that we got way more than what we need. looking at the global map see how far I travelled in the amount of time that I've had. Waypoint manager is a great thing it puts all your waypoints for your contracts in that box on the left hand side um, and then also displays at the top just under the altimeter how far it is or how long it's going to take to get there at your current speed. So just approaching the land mass where the waypoints are for that contract See, I've got the box open at the top for my communitron for no apparent reason. <laughs> I'm starting to try and lose some height now. Um, thinking about landing. So, as you can see, this episode's going to be called Derps and Fails because. Pretty much everything you can think of that could go wrong does go wrong here. So what I'm doing here is I'm just put, this is a nice part of Kerbal 1.2.2 is you can pin the individual items. You don't really need to do this. You can use the action group, but for some reason I forgot about that at this point. Um, so I'm just getting ready to come into land so I can retract the landing gear whenever I get there. Also got my thermometer ready because that's what's required for this particular contract. It's recording temperature at these sites. There we go, getting down to below 4,000 meters now. Getting pretty close.
There we go, just login temperature, get into science for um, the temperature read over that site, and here we go. So you can see I've killed the engines and I am dropping the landing gear. That also kills speed as well. And you can just sort of coast in from here on. Although your altitude just obviously drop when your speed drops. Swedish there. Yeah. Coming down, try to kill off that altitude. Gonna have to kill off the speed pretty shortly. Do that by just flicking the nose up and letting the air come off the bottom of the wings. Still unstable on pulling up and down, pulling to the right here. Yeah. Brakes switched on for when I do touch down. But as you can see in a minute, this pulling to the right is going to be the end of me. And now it's pulling to the left, trying to correct it. And it's all looking fine at this point. And if I had managed to put it down as flat and level as this, then what's about to happen would it happen? Because when I pull up and try to kill off the speed just before we come in to land here, see it's fine at this point. Still fine, but now you can see it's tipping to the left. I don't correct it this time just too busy watching my shadow on the ground you can see I'm coming down pretty fast tipping more to the left more to the left trying to balance it now it's tipping over to the right over correct to the left and that's gonna flip me onto my left and explode the wing and then pretty much everything else except the cockpit So I was mildly frustrated and I was really close to reverting flight there, but then I have second thoughts and you know I've collected science along the way. Um, I could build a more stable plane and come back to that mission and actually complete it off later. So instead of going through that again, I decided to take a break and have a look for another mission. So there's a couple of little things I could do quite easily without having to put much effort in. But again, this is the fail and derps episode, so this takes a couple of attempts as well. <laughs> so this is just test the heat shield at the launch site. So, probe double dying, battery, heat shield on the bottom. I'm like, yeah, that'll do it, that'll work. Of course, it's an unmanned probe, and how are you meant to, you know, transfer data from an unmanned probe if you have no way of communicating? So, I have to go back to the VAB, stick an antenna on it. Easiest time. And the 
test and that's the contract complete. So I could just recover that now, no loss. And then we move on to another parts test. So this time we're testing the Hammer Solid Fuel Booster symbol, just got to launch it. We run the test for engines by just running them through the staging sequence at the launch site. So let's have a quick look, make sure it's all done. And there we go, just by launching, that is the mission parameters complete. So it's just a case of waiting for it to smash into the ocean. So I can recover the parts that splashed into the ocean from that one. This gives me a little bit of money back. And I'm starting to look at which other missions are actually available to me at the moment. And a lot of these engine tests and stuff aren't a bit really available because I haven't unlocked the engines yet. That one's difficult because of the speed and altitude that's required to actually do it. Though it is possible. And the others aren't really. Ferrying around VIPs isn't really a safe thing at the moment. So that perform experiments around the KSE, that's something I'll get to in the next episode or two. It's got to make it a little buggy. So now I'm looking at the ComSat contract, which is to have a network of satellites around Kerbin. So one at least is always in contact with the base and yeah, so they're all equidistant with the same orbital period. So that they will stay the same distance apart. So that way anything near to them satellites will always have a connection with the uh, the KSA. So what I'm thinking is is that the first satellite that goes up is only gonna have a very limited amount of time whilst it's actually connected to the KSA. 
So what I'm planning to do is send up a unmanned probe attached to a manned probe so I can manually input commands to the manned probe after it separates. And then um, fly back to manned probe as and when I feel like it rather than when I'm connected. But what I don't realise at this moment is that I have the probe double dying as the main probe and the Mark 1 command thing with um, as just a secondary part so it doesn't automatically put crew into it. So yeah I'll realise that quite a bit later on. So I'm just building up the probe for the commsat itself. Um, so I'm just making sure it's named correctly. Comsat one. Change my flag quickly. So here I'm just giving the manned probe bit, thinking that I need to bring the manned part back. Uh, some fuel on a little engine, its own heat shield, but then I realise I obviously need the, the coupler before the heat shield, and then on like that. That's absolutely fine. And that's just so I can retrograde my orbit with the manned part to get back into the atmosphere after. I've separated from the main probe section. So two of the biggest fuel tanks I can put on at the moment. <coughs> and then I'm thinking that doesn't need quite as big an engine. Worried about the weight of the thing. Parachute arm. I realize I'm gonna need battery to be able to fire the parachute. So we go with a Reliant engine, which again is the most powerful engine I can use at the moment. And then we are using decouplers. And we're going to use the Space R radial SRBs. Just to boost us up into orbit. Well, to get us up through the worst part of the atmosphere anyway. <coughs> the Reliant engines are better in a vacuum, much better in a vacuum, than the SRBs. Now I realise I need a reaction wheel just to get some control over the damn thing. So we've got solar panels on the main body of the satellite itself, adding some fins for control whilst in the atmosphere, and then the struts at the start for launching. So now I'm just sorting out my staging sequence. everything is backwards at the moment. Changing it to a probe from a ship, just so that the game itself knows that it's a probe. Let's go for the contract to make sure it's all good. Did I realise there's a contract? for testing the Spacer Radio SRB 
but that's a dirt pit itself because well you'll see later on Then I'm just testing it. We're still in uh, time lapse here, so it's looking a lot faster than what it is. So I've got the right speed, but can't, I'm going to be going too fast by the time I get to the uh, height that's required. So I decided to only use two of the SRBs, all in the effort of completing another contract at the same time. Still really learning as I go along how to get it the ships as perfect as possible. So here we go again. Now I'm re realizing I probably want the engineering system. It gives you access to all the orbit stats on screen rather than having to work it out for yourself. So I think why the hell not? Add the science junior, get a bit of extra science whilst I'm up there. then I realise I probably need to reduce the thrust of them boosters. Back to the launch pad. And so we're ready to go also I think. And so SAS on. And I reduced the Thruster. The thruster is way too much and it doesn't even lift it off the ground. It's back to the VAB again. And actually at the end of all this testing and resetting and redoing, none of it's going to matter. So still going too fast, too soon. Again. I'm getting closer each time to be able to, to fulfill this contract. Still not right though, back to the VAB. Can you tell I'm getting frustrated yet? It's 
start to tip thinking I'm going to get there this time. Now I'm at the right height but the wrong speed. So I decided to redesign how I'm going to go about it and add some more SRBs. Just trying to keep it balanced. Then I really need to rearrange the staging. Give some extra fins. Not compensated for the extra weight. And can't get off the ground again. Finally get off the ground thinking yeah this is looking pretty good this time. Still not getting close, and I realise I need the rest of the engines. Starting the gravity turn. Main engine cuts in, and this time it is really close. It's fixed about 6,000 meters. I need to be at this speed for, but the speed drops away too much too fast. Definitely getting closer to what I need to be doing. So, decided to get more speed at the start. Go up to full thrust on the thrusters. fire the thrusters and as you can see all of them were fulfilled that time and that's when I think I realized that this isn't the exact same thrusters as what's in the contract so this time I'm actually just gonna go into space and get the launch up there considering that I've got to get four satellites into orbit anyway just got a bit fast through the lower atmosphere Finishing the gravity turn, realizing my apoapsis is getting close to the target. So, any second now, I'm going to shut down the engines and use the flight computer to circularize the orbit. So, in this case, point to node and execute. 
Peter's turning the ship around for me, like that. Now's probably a good time, if I remember. Yep. Extend the antenna. Reducing the thrust when you're circularizing it a little bit um, helps by... It just makes it more accurate for the computer to be able to judge when it needs to switch on or switch off. Still not realized at this point there is no Kerbal aboard this ship. So I can could control it when it's within signal range. Getting that science. Close the doors. And then time accelerates at a node. Burning away. See that all the actual requirements for the contract are complete now. There goes the main stage, and on to the smaller engines now. Time to extend the solar panels. We'll wear out, face the sun. So then realizing how it's stage between the big engine and the small engine is miscalculated burn and the orbit is far from circular. So I'm turning down the thrust to get an accurate circularization. So I set it at the periapsis to circularize again. And this is where the realization comes in that I'm gonna have problems. I'm still within range of the KSC at the moment. Still got signal, you can see it underneath the uh, time for the mission. Accelerating to that node and then realizing it will fire to one. It fires. 
but then it all starts to go a bit wrong. To a point where I'm not even reducing him out. So I manually stop it. So here going, what's going wrong? I don't understand. That's where I realise there's no Kerbal on board. No connection. So I'm kind of thinking, can I just, you know, manually put it into an orbit and, you know, just do it by computer and bring it back home that way? So time accelerate up to where I'm back in signal range again. in signal range now so can start to plan what I need to be doing and I need to adjust the inclination or oh, I think I do realize that it's not gonna really work out too great for me So I think, well, I'll get as close as I can and work with it. It doesn't need to be perfectly zero degrees anyway. So I execute that one. Bit of time acceleration. So I'm thinking we're all good, but we'll be able to get back and it's all going to be good and I'm trying to adjust the orbit in a way that will put us in the right position. Get rid of the alarm clock. Accelerate up to our node. And this actually fires okay, I'm just about, or I was just about in connection and I had to remove it. Mm. 
So then I'm accelerating back around to signal. Again. So, whoa there. So I separate the stages and I realise I've got my coupling all wrong. And the batteries are in the wrong place and it's just not going to work out. So I have to revert the flight after all that. And that's where I kind of wrap up the episode, the episode of Derps and Fails. So back to the KC and yeah, I guess we'll see next time where it does start to get a bit better slowly. There's still one more big derp to come, I remember, but you know, it was a learning process for me getting this one right. Yep, and that's where I left it. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.